She is the first hearing impaired comedian. She's been on HBO on The Tonight Show. Please welcome to the stage, Kathy Buckley. When I was born, I was born out age negative. And then a couple years later, I developed vitamin meningitis. Doctors told my family, quote, that I would be a slow learner and that I would not grow to be any taller than 5'2". And I was in the school for retardation for two years before they found out it was just a hearing loss. And they called me slow. <laughs> I had no dreams, no goals, no ambition. Nobody taught me to have that. When I graduated from high school, I ended up getting a job in a warehouse, ticketing merchandise. One day, I decided to go to the beach to get some color. <laughs> Laying on the beach, sunbathing, lifeguard jeep runs me over. Talk about not knowing what your job description is. <laughs> the jeep ran over my face, stomach, chest, side, and back. I was laid up for five years. I was in and out of a wheelchair for two and a half years. They thought I'd never walk again. I figured I didn't hear them. I got up and I left. <laughs> Two years later, I found out I had cancer. After a while, you get a little pissed off. <laughs> I went in, had the surgery, had the treatment. Doctor said they got everything. I'm like, yes. Six months later, I get a phone call. Kathy, we didn't get it all. I don't know what to do. I'm pacing back and forth from my apartment. Do I have the surgery? Do I not? I really don't know what to do. I spent the first 20 years of my life trying to kill myself. I finally died, and then I decided to stay. <laughs> and now you're sitting there going, give me six months to six years to live? I've not had a date in three and a half years, and I don't know if it's because I haven't heard the phone ring or what. <laughs> my hearing impairment is not my handicap. Being sexually frustrated, now there is a handicap. Now, lip reading is my main source of communication, and I do have to go up to people sometimes and say, excuse me, um, but I do lip read. I usually get this. Oh, um, so oh, sorry. <laughs> All anybody ever wants out of life is to be treated with respect. But in order to be treated with respect, you have to be able to give it. And in order to give it, you have to have it first and foremost, for yourself. Otherwise, you don't have the gift to share. It's that simple. Isn't that true? We all pass judgment. And nine times out of 10, when we pass a judgment, it's a negative concept, correct? Well, I passed a judgment on a very lovely lady. I was invited to Washington, D.C. to perform at the Kennedy Center for some kind of award presentation. I go into the green room, and in the green room is a woman. She's in a wheelchair. She's a quadriplegic. My first judgment I passed upon her was, my gosh, what kind of a life is this? She can't move, she can't walk, she can't talk. She had nothing to contribute to society. In five seconds or less, I have this woman pegged for death, me. Her assistant came by and she said, when she opens her eyes, that means yes. When she closes her eyes, that means no. I said, great, I spent my whole life learning how to read lips, now I gotta go to school for some eyelids over here. When I said that, the woman in the wheelchair started to laugh. It was a horrendous sound. It was this, <laughs> But to me, it was the most beautiful sound I ever heard. I realized right then and there, I can communicate with her. That night, Ruth received an award. She wrote two top-selling books with a blink of an eye. With today's technology, she too has a computer. It's called a wood board. They hook it up to the chest. The wire goes to the eyelids. When the letters blink that she wants, she blinks her eyes or goes into the computer. Two top selling books. <laughs> that night after the show, Ruth had a computer printout for me, and it sat on it. Thank you so much for making me laugh. But more than anything else, thank you for treating me as though you would treat anyone else. I took that piece of paper and I wrote on the back of it, and I handed it to her. I said, there, that's your bill for the entertainment. <laughs> you know, people always say, how you doing? Fine. What the hell is fine? Does that mean your pulse is still going? I don't know. I say fabulous, terrific. And even if I feel like shit, once I say it, I am feeling good. You have to change your life. 
Don't get comfortable with what you already know. Get comfortable with what you can learn, what you can challenge, how you can grow. I want you to take your hands out, reach in front of you, and wiggle your fingers. That, my darling, is a miracle. Look at those fingers. That's a miracle. I want you to take the person next to you and give them a hug. I want you to say to the person next to you, I love you. Thing, and I mean the only thing that I ever get in your way in your life is you. You are your enemy, your best friend. It is up to you to make your transformation. It is up to you to make your contribution. It is up to you to fulfill your heart with joy. It is up to you to find your bliss. It is up to you. No one could put a label on you. Take them off. Take every bit of label off of you. If somebody is giving you a hard time, Respect their journey. Don't let their hard time become yours. Respect their journey. No matter how. How many of you believe there's a part of you missing? How many? Come on, bring it. I want to see it. You have to be true to yourself in order to succeed in this world. You have to be honest with yourself in order to move forward. You are not here to please anybody but yourself first and foremost. You can't move forward pleasing everybody else in life. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. How many of you in this room right now have somebody you have to forgive? Okay, how many of you have to forgive yourself? Put it down. This is where you break my heart. Do you know that when you have to forgive somebody? Do you know when you have to forgive somebody? Do you know what you're harboring inside of you? Anger, resentment, fear, anxiety, anticipation. You are creating unnecessary negative energy in your life because of somebody else? You are willing to give that power over? Forgiveness is the best gift you can give yourself. If you have to forgive yourself for something, then I can guarantee you, if you have to forgive yourself for something, what's the first thing you learn? I'm never doing that again. <laughs> right? So why beat yourself up over it? It's a lesson learned. Why beat yourself up over it? It's a lesson learned. Move forward. Move forward. Don't let anything hold you back. Miss Joan Daly taught me how to talk through a balloon. She would take a balloon, blow it up, tie it in a knot, and place it right here on her throat and chest. And I put my hand on the balloon, and I could feel the vibration of her voice. And I tried to imitate it by feeling my own. So I remember Miss Joan Daly in a red balloon, and I taught myself how to sing. Somewhere over the rainbow, bluebird. Birds fly over the rainbow, why, oh, why can't I? I have. Thank you. Thank you.